So you're thinking about buying a home at the Oregon coast and maybe you've never been here. Well, in this video, we're going to talk about the things that maybe you won't find online. We're going to talk about the things that maybe you won't hear from other people and we're getting into it right now. What's up everybody, this is Paul Clem and Seth Marchant with the Home Team Brokers coming to you from the Oregon coast. And if this is your first time to the channel living on the Oregon coast, make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the little bell to make sure that you're notified every time we drop a new video. And we get people reaching out to us all the time who are thinking about buying a home, selling a home, relocating to the area um, at the Oregon coast, and we love to hear from you. So if you're thinking about buying a home at the Oregon coast, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, even schedule a Zoom call in the description below of this video. However you decide to get a hold of us, we have your back when it comes to moving to the Oregon coast. So what do you think? Well, let's, uh, let's talk about the things that people don't know or you might not learn online or people might not tell you if you've never been to the Oregon coast. <clears throat> so I think first thing, um, there's a big difference between the north, northern Oregon coast and the south Oregon coast. Yeah. That's probably the, the biggest thing. And uh, maybe one thing to point out as well too, especially if somebody's like coming from Washington, you know, in, in Oregon we've got the 101 that parallels the coast all the way from the southern Oregon coast to the northern Oregon coast. Some, some places like Washington, for example, you don't have kind of towns along the entire coastline. Oregon does. So we've got towns all the way from the, the southernmost town is gonna to be Brookings, right there on the California border. And then the northernmost town is gonna to be Astoria, right there on the Washington border. Uh, but there is a big difference between Astoria and a Brookings. There's a big difference between the northern Oregon coast and the southern Oregon coast. And I, I would say one of the biggest things, you know, people always want to talk about the weather when it comes to, to Oregon or, or the Oregon coast. And sure. uh, the southern Oregon coast definitely gets a lot more sun. So you see a lot more retirees going down there. Um, specifically, uh, Gold Beach uh, to Brookings. Maybe, maybe Bandon, but I think Bandon, you're probably a little bit too far north to get that Brookings effect. Yeah, I think it's maybe slightly warmer on yeah. average. Yeah, uh, but maybe. yeah, yeah, that's just kind of maybe the north end of that. But yeah, yeah. slightly warmer and and banded, but probably doesn't quite get that Brookings effect. I think Brookings has set a record a couple weeks ago. Uh, they had oh, a, that's right. Yeah, they had the warmest day for that day uh, for the state on record. It was something like 88 degrees or something like that. And keep in mind. We're in February right now here in Oregon, so having a, a, a town, especially along the Oregon coast, to, to reach 88 degrees, uh, uh, that kind of goes to show you that um, you're going to find some variation in the weather and you won't see that on the northern Oregon coast. Northern Oregon coast, typically temperatures in the highs are going to be in the summertime when it's warmest are going to be like 70s. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty rare that you would yeah, see something Yeah, even like 68, crack, 69 is, is generally what you High see. High 60s, low 70s, yeah. So the weather is probably one of the bigger um, differences for, for people that are looking between the northern Oregon coast and the southern Oregon coast. Yeah, um, so you know, you have that northern region, the southern region, there's also that central region, so you know, really the Oregon coast is separated into three distinct regions. The central region is really kind of a good mix of the north and the south um, as far as you know on the south towns are a little more spread out you get a little bit of that on the central Oregon coast too but the central Oregon coast is also a little closer to places like Portland, Salem, uh, uh, Corvallis, Eugene and kind of that Willamette Valley so you probably get more people um, going into the central Oregon coast uh, than the southern Oregon coast and then the northern Oregon coast probably gets the majority of uh, the tourism. Um, it's just, it's a little more dense. The towns are um, a little closer together, um, but there's more to do too. I mean, as far as some of those tourist attractions and you know, uh, that could be a big draw if you're thinking about buying a second home or a vacation home. But even if you're thinking about relocating to somewhere full time, you know, the question, uh, you know, could be, 
do you want to have more activity, more things to do in your day to day, you know, beyond just like beach combing and maybe going out for a hike, you're going to get more activity on the Northern Oregon coast probably. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so b being more congested, the northern Oregon coast is going to be just due west of uh, Portland, which is our, our largest city here in Oregon, um, and then sort of closer to the central Oregon coast, you've got Eugene, uh, you've got Salem, although this is a little bit further north, but a, a lot of your bigger cities in the state are going to be in the north, and so consequently a lot of people traveling from those places, such as Portland, tend to go to the northern Oregon coastal towns, such as Seaside. Cannon Beach, Astoria, and for that reason, you tend to find a lot more congestion, and there's a lot of routes too, to just go from like a Portland or a Eugene just to head exactly due west and make your way to the coast. That's not the case for Southern Oregon. If you're coming from a, uh, a Medford or a Grants Pass, uh, there is no direct route to get to Brookings or Gold Beach. You gotta go north and then come south, or you have to go all the way south and back into California and then come back up the 101 to get to Brookings for, for some places that you're coming from in like a, in a Medford. So um, the weather and the congestion, and then um, piggybacking on the weather too, the sunshine, you do get a lot less rain on the Southern Oregon coast, typically about 60 days less of rain every year yeah. in the southern Oregon coast as a pair, uh, compared to a, a northern Oregon coast. Yeah, so there's 363 miles of coastline. You know, there's very distinct um, kind of climates and, and just kind of feel overall and to some degree landscape in these different regions. And so uh, there's a lot of options on the table if you're broadly considering moving to the Oregon coast. And it's just kind of a question of do you want... Uh, an area that's going to be a little less populated, towns are more spread out, it's maybe a little more quiet, a little more peaceful, um, or do you want, um, you know, kind of a, a little more busier day-to-day, -day, uh, you know, as, as far as what an area offers, you know, do you want to see tourists coming in and out every day, or do you not want to have to deal with that? Um, you know, as you, as you kind of work your way south on the coast, I mean, the towns do get more spread out. The towns do tend to get a little bit smaller as well. Uh, but another thing to note probably, um, you know, especially if you haven't spent much time on the Oregon coast, is overall, these are, these are all small towns. I mean, we're talking about uh, Coos Bay and North Bend, which are two towns that are connected to each other, just on kind of the northern end of the southern Oregon coast. Um, there's about 26,000 people that live there. And that's the largest population center. So if you think about an area like where you live, think about a town of 20 or 30,000 people, that's probably what you could compare it to. Uh, but the next largest towns are um, you know, gonna be like Astoria, um, your, uh, Lincoln City, Newport. These are about 10,000 people, Florence. Um, and then you have a few towns that are around five or 7,000 people. And then there's a lot that are like 2,000, 1,000, or even just a few hundred people. Um, so you may not necessarily see that if you're just looking at houses or looking at pictures of an area. Some towns that have a pretty small population do kind of look or feel a little bit bigger, and some areas that feel a little bit smaller have a larger population than you would think. So it can be a little bit deceptive, um, but you know, you're, you're not going to come out to the Oregon coast and get a town like Portland. Um, now some areas, Portland's going to be an hour or two hours away. Um, which is great, but you know these aren't big population centers. This is definitely small town living across the board. Yeah, and um, th some of those bigger towns too, um, like uh, a Coos Bay, uh, for example, um, Coos Bay slash North Bend. Those those two towns are um, kind of in conjunction with each other. If you put those two together, that's definitely the most populous area um, on the Oregon coast. A lot of the bigger areas are actually set inland uh, at the mouth of, of the, a, a river or along uh, a river. So a lot of these Oregon coastal towns too are not actually right on the coast. Some of them are, a lot of them are smaller though. A lot of the bigger ones, like, like in Astoria. You know, Astoria, um, if you're living in Astoria, you're right along the Columbia River uh, getting to the actual coast, if you actually want to go to the beach, is going to be five, ten minutes away, depending on where you're coming from to your west. So a lot of these bigger towns kind of set a little bit more inland um, along a river. So it's kind of more of uh, that kind of like port, like uh, river um, style living. And then a lot of the smaller towns uh, um, like a, a Cannon Beach um, or a Pacific City, some of the smaller towns um, are going to be right there on the coast and uh, they all kind of have their their drawbacks and you know their, their benefits 
but um, if you really want that kind of coastal feel and like and actually be able to walk to the beach kind of regardless of where you're at where you live in your in, in your town you're gonna want one of those towns that's actually on the coast and not sort of inland along one of the, the mouth of one of these rivers yeah if you're moving to the Oregon coast to be at the beach um, you know and that's something that you you know you have on your must-have list there's going to be towns where the beaches are more accessible or like Seth said right on the beach and there's going to be areas where you know you, got, you have to drive a ways um, there's not going to be any any walking access to a beach so yeah and with those smaller towns too um, if you if you do want one of those smaller towns like a Manzanita for example um, you are going to run into extreme housing shortages. A lot of those smaller towns sure. that have like a thousand people, two thousand people, sometimes they only have like one or two houses on the market like right now in the winter time. Things will pick up in the summertime of course, but finding a house can be pretty difficult sometimes uh, in these smaller towns. And also a lot of these smaller towns too, a lot of them have a lot of uh, VRBOs, Airbnbs, a lot of vacation rentals too. So those vacation rentals tend to get held on to um, by the owners for longer periods of time. So you don't have homes where you have families, you know, empty nesters and, and people moving as frequently. So homes aren't turning over as often. So that's kind of one of the bigger challenges if you want to look for one of these smaller towns to live in. But that's part of what, what we're here for is to, to help you find that perfect home. Yeah, um, you know, definitely in, in some of the kind of resort first communities or, you know, tourism first communities, which are it, a, a lot of the times these towns that have 500 to maybe 2,500 people and they're set on the beach, you know, you're competing with, you know, an, an extra segment, um, you know, for, uh, for housing and that is second home buyers or maybe not second home buyers so much as, uh, you know, people who are uh, getting investment properties, vacation rentals, you know, and they're buying not just one, but maybe two or three. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not your typical market where, you know, it's just kind of the standard turnover, like Seth was saying. There, there's a, you know, there's there's kind of an added element to what you're working against um, or what you're up against as a buyer. Um, but you know, it again, you know, there, there's going to be pros and cons to. A smaller town, a bigger town, a town on the beach, or a town that is set off the beach, and you know, it seems like up and down the Oregon coast, um, there's you know a lot of similarity from town to town, regardless of the size or kind of the geographical configuration. Um, you know, it's it, overall the Oregon coast, the, the biggest uh, industry is tourism, so you know every town is going to have. You know, a, a lot of restaurants, breweries, bars, uh, wine shops, things like that. Uh, you know, all these towns seem to have like art galleries, museums. So you, you get a lot of the same type of things in different towns, um, you know, kind of regardless of where you go. But every town, you know, has its differences too. And there's a lot of nuance. And, you know, like Seth said, that's, you know, that's what we're here for. You know, if, if you're trying to vet these different towns and see what might be the best area for you, um, you know, let's just get in touch and talk about some of the things that are top priority. Yeah, that is one thing that you'll definitely want to uh, to figure out if you're coming here is uh, is what the uh, the work situation looks like, what the job opportunity situation looks like, because a lot of these towns are smaller retirement towns. There's not a ton of industry, like Paul said, a lot of tourism, restaurants, um, breweries. I suppose we should give a little shout out here. We are at uh, Rusty Truck Brewing here in Lincoln City. Um, tons of breweries up and down the Oregon coast. One of the things that makes it so great, of course. But um, that's one thing that uh, that you might really want to um, put some uh, attention on is is where uh, are the job opportunities? There's not a ton of industry. You know, a lot of the industry, like Paul said, re revolves around the tourism. Other than that, you know, it's going to revolve around you know some of the natural resources, um, whether that's you know timber or fishing. You know, fishing is a, a big part of uh, the Oregon coast. Um, all the way up and down the Oregon coast, uh, you have crabbing in some spots year-round. Um, we had uh, in Newport, um, deadliest catch did a did a season in Newport. That's right. Yeah. Um, and it was a couple couple years ago here, not not too long ago. But um, that's definitely one thing that, that people kind of need to you know that, that are thinking about moving here is uh, figuring out what's what's the job situation like, what are the job opportunities because it, it really is going to vary from town to town. Yeah, I, um, I believe the biggest contributor to income uh, uh, at the Oregon coast as a whole is retirement income, um, and then you know most of the jobs 
are going to revolve around tourism. Um, so, you know, if you're not moving here for a job and you're wondering kind of what the prospects might look like, you know, it, it's going to vary from town to town. That tourism element is always going to be there, but, you know, some of the larger towns have, you know, kind of more industry and infrastructure to support the local economy in that town or regionally in that region of the Oregon coast. So, you know, there, there's going to be towns that have, you know, more healthcare um, jobs, for example, um, or, you know, legal, um, finance, uh, real estate, of course, um, you know, and, and kind of down the line. So, you know, there are um, kind of your traditional um, industries that do exist, but it's going to be commensurate with the size of the town as well. So, uh, you know, a place like Lincoln City or Newport with about 10,000 people, there's probably going to be more job opportunity than a town like, say, Manzanita, uh, for example, or Pacific City that have like 500 or 1,000 people, and it's really all just kind of catered to tourism in places like that. Yeah. And the next thing you're really going to want to consider um, is is your lifestyle, um, whether that's sure. the, your your interests or um, things to do with shopping. You know, the shopping really does vary. Um, you know, and that's going to kind of tie directly in. It's going to be commensurate with the population. So the northern Oregon coast is more populous. There's more people there, so there's more shopping there. Probably some of the best shopping is going to be around Astoria, Seaside. You've got the outlets in Seaside, Astoria. You've got the trifecta of Walmart, Costco, and Fred Meyer. Um, whereas a lot of the southern Oregon coastal towns, you're going to be kind of um, you're going to you're going to have more just smaller markets, kind of smaller grocery stores, kind of mom and pops. You know, no big name brands, no no box stores, no stuff like that, and. The, 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 the kind of lifestyle for the southern Oregon coast is a very laid back, quiet, um, a lot of stuff closes at 8 or 9 p.m. on the southern Oregon coast, you know, whereas um, you can find stuff like in Astoria, you can find uh, restaurants that will stay open until midnight or bars that stay open until till 2 a.m. So um, the lifestyle is definitely a, a smaller town, laid back, kind of quiet, like Monday through Thursday lifestyle, if, if you're even working. Uh, down in Gold Beach and Brookings, whereas the northern Oregon coast, Astoria, Seaside, Cannon Beach, um, and, and on down is going to have a little bit more of a faster paced lifestyle, a little bit uh, more of a lifestyle that's catered towards tourism and people are going to stay out later at night and do more things and be more out and about and want to do more shopping, um, you know, want to go to Costco, stuff like that. So that's another thing too that people are really, when they come here, they, they kind of figure out, it's like, okay, where's my shopping and, you know, what. What kind of what kind of shopping do I need for you know my particular lifestyle? Yeah, um, you know, and maybe a good way to think about it is you know some of uh, kind of the distinct differences from town to town is there's going to be towns where at any given point in time, you know, 50% of the people that are in that town in that moment are there on vacation, yeah. and then there's going to be areas where you know that's going to be much less, you know, like probably like a Coos Bay or Brookings, for example. Um, so. It, yeah, it's 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 how much do you want to kind of um, you know put up with uh, people coming in and out. You know, there's traffic and crowds and things that come along with that. Uh, but those areas probably, you know, like we've talked about, have a little more activity, things to do, um, things are open. You know, there's more options, um, open later. You know, and, and so forth. So, I think one thing that's consistent up and down the Oregon coast, really, regardless of where you live, is. No matter if you uh, consider yourself an outdoors person yeah. uh, right now, um, you, you You're gonna be. yeah probably should get ready to, to get yeah. outdoors because you know that's a huge draw to the area. Whether it's people who live here um, and want that lifestyle, or it's people who travel here on vacation, everything in between. Um, you know, you have the beach, you have rivers, you have bays, and then you have the coastal range, which is you know just east of you know the, the entire uh, Oregon coast. So. You know, beachcombing, hiking, fishing, surfing, uh, kayaking, stand-up paddleboarding. Um, you know, you can uh, go get some uh, clams. Yeah, razor clams. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's just no shortage of things to do outdoors. Yeah, def definitely. That's uh, you know, if, if you're not an outdoorsy person, I think anybody that's coming here is going to be an outdoorsy person. But if you're not, you're, you're probably going to be, um, unless you're a hermit and you just want to be, you know cooped up in your house all day long so for the Oregon I think people have done that enough <laughs> right <laughs> people are done with that yeah 
So th th um, that is one thing that probably doesn't distinguish too much um, from the northern to the central to the southern Oregon coast. There are amazing places to hike and outdoor things to do and things to see all up and down the Oregon coast. The southern Oregon coast is a little bit more scenic, uh, probably namely Samuel uh, Boardman um, State Park. Yeah. So if you ever uh, if you ever travel, if you've ever been to like. Um, a gift shop at an airport or just you know some place outside of Oregon or even outside of the country and you see uh, a picture of Oregon there's there's like a handful of things that you will see that are sort of quintessential Oregon you'll see like Multnomah Falls for Portland you'll see Crater Lake uh, and then usually you'll see a picture along the Oregon coast and usually that picture comes from Samuel, uh, Samuel Boardman Park or Haystack Rock or Haystack Rock or by the way, Haystack Rock, actually, in my most recent video. Where's Haystack Rock? Cannon Beach. Well, it's Tullavana Park in Cannon Beach. Okay. Is that, is that, is that your only answer? That was my answer <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> until a couple days ago. You got so, me stumped. <laughs> so I went to Pacific City, right, and I did, I did my most oh, recent Oh, there's video. another Haystack Rock there's there. There's another Haystack yeah. Rock there. And, you know, right. before I was doing my research, I was like, you know, what what's the name of that rock in Pacific City? Because I don't really, like, does, is there a nickname for that rock? And couldn't figure it out. The only thing I could find was <laughs> Haystack Rock. And if you Google search Haystack Rock, you're gonna you're just gonna see Cannon Beach. There's yeah. there's, there's no right. mention of Pacific City. In fact, there's a third Haystack Rock on the Oregon coast. Get Do out you of know here. where that might be? No. Third one's in Banda. Okay, sure. So us Oregonians, when you say Haystack Rock, we always think of Cannon Beach, um, but apparently Haystack Rock is more of like a, a classification or something. It's not a name for that specific rock. So um, you've got that rock in Cannon Beach, Pacific City, and uh, you've got it. Uh, in Bandon uh, as well. Yeah, so I actually heard recently uh, that I, I believe Haystack Rock is actually the most photographed on the Oregon coast. Yeah. And that might be like, you know, not just professional photography, that might be like, you know, Instagram and stuff like that as well. Uh, but then Samuel Boardman um, and then Manzanita and Oswald West State Park and the Neocani Mountain, um, that area is just south of Cannon Beach. That's actually actually the third most photographed area on the Oregon coast. Yeah, that's so. It, if you Google search Cannon Beach, it's you're going to be hard pressed to find a picture without Haystack Rock. Um, but uh, going back to what I was saying, though, it's that's so. If if you see a picture of Oregon, the sort of quintessential Oregon coast, it's probably going to be the southern Oregon coast with a lot of rock formations, or it might be a uh, Haystack Rock, which is probably in Cannon Beach. Could be in Pacific City, could be in Bandon though, apparently. Um, so that's a little bit of confusion too. If you're coming from yeah. outside of the state and you're like, hey, I want to go see Haystack Rock, <laughs> you're probably going to end up in uh, Cannon Beach. It's You're probably not going to end up in Pacific City and you're definitely not going to end up in Bandon. But yeah, they're all that's three right. um, uh, known as Haystack Rock, uh, yeah. according to the internets. Well, uh, just to kind of go back to something that's uh, maybe a little more on the negative side, if this is something that you're considering, um, just to, to kind of touch back on the housing piece again, um, it's super competitive. You know, and we talked about some of the reasons why, but, you know, we're, we're working with so many buyers looking for homes at the Oregon coast, you know, really all up and down uh, the Oregon coast. And, you know, the options are limited, so it, it can be tough. Um, you know, and I think that's probably why having, you know, some agents that are here um, that can be out in front of that when you're searching, and you know, so you can be ready, uh, you know, if there's one that you like and want to potentially make an offer on, um, yeah. definitely helps. Boots on the ground, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, if, if you're searching right now, um, you know, you may have seen how quickly some of these houses are selling. Yeah. Uh, but between kind of the lack of options right now um, and how quickly things are selling, it, it can be hard. So I guess the point there is, you know, uh, if it is something you are truly considering, considering, um, you know, just get ready for what might be a little bit of a battle. Um, yeah, it's it's bad across the country, but it's definitely not any better in Oregon. And I, I think it's particularly bad on the Oregon coast because of the tourism, right? So because not only are there a ton of um, people such as millennials that want to buy their first house, but there's a lot more people that are looking to buy their second house these days. And there's also a lot of private equity now. Um, that, that are buying up homes. So you've got a lot of groups that are all competing uh, with homes that are kind of, you know, what, what you would consider like first time buyer homes. 
you know, homes that are kind of in that starter price point. So uh, that's really driving up the competition. It brings in tons of offers. Homes go way above asking. Um, you know, not not to you know, you know, make it sound too you know glib. <laughs> There's sure. no way that you can buy a home, but it is very competitive. And uh, if you are going to have a chance at actually winning an offer, um, you definitely want to have an agent that's going to be there to uh, to be the boots on the ground and really be able to support you and kind of work all the different angles of a deal that it might take to actually to win an offer and to, to also probably advise you too on, on what it's going to take to win an offer. You know, a, a lot of people when they're searching online, they're going on Zillow and uh, they're looking at homes, you know, if they're approved for a certain number, let's call it 500,000 just to pick an even number, they're looking at homes that are $500,000. Yeah, right? right. You know, they're not looking at homes that are 425. Um, and you know those homes that are listed at 500 are, are typically going for about five percent over, so a 525, and 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 a lot higher too. Yeah, five yeah. percent probably on the lower end. So that's probably the big struggle for people uh, moving here right now is the housing market is as bad here, uh, or or we should say is as competitive. Great for sellers if you're a seller, it's great for you, but is as competitive for buyers right now um, as anywhere else in the country. Yeah, so you know, that's why you know what we like to do right out of the gate. Um, <clears throat> pardon me, you know, especially because it, you know of the competition and you know how how much uh, kind of variety and how many options there are up and down the Oregon coast. The first thing we like to do is schedule a Zoom call with people who are considering moving here. Um, you know, we can talk for 30 minutes, even up to an hour, and we'll talk to you for as long as you want to get to know what you're looking for and kind of what the best strategy will be for you. And then from there, we can be off and running. So there is a link to uh, our uh, calendar in the description of this video if you want to schedule a Zoom call with us. Yeah. Yep, the, the better we can understand what you're looking for, the more success we can have. With that being said though, you know some people don't wanna jump on a Zoom, um, and so if you just wanna text us or shoot us an email, a lot of people do that too. Um, speak to a, a fair amount of people that we don't have you know, faces um, yeah, to, to, to names right. uh, at this point. Um, and a lot of people, you know, are looking to put in offers um, on homes out of state, sight unseen, you know, and, uh, you know, if you're somebody that's a little bit more private and don't want to do a Zoom, that's totally fine. We work with those people too. But to Paul's point, the better we can kind of understand what you're looking for, what your needs and wants are, the better we can kind of guide you to maybe where that perfect place is and, and what the perfect home will be in that place. Yeah, and really what the next steps look like is, you know, we get into the houses you might want to see, take some videos, and we're going to be brutally honest, you know, especially if you are considering buying something sight unseen. You know, we have people on the East Coast, Midwest, South, you know, you name it. So, um, you know, it's hard to fly out here, um, you know, and, and come come see homes, you know, especially, the you know, the way the market is you know, moving. Go, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, we're going to be brutally honest with you and let you know if it's something that, um, you know, would be a good investment and, and it's something that maybe even more importantly you know is going to fit your wants and needs yeah yeah so um, again uh, if you have any questions about buying a home um, need any help at all you can jump on a zoom with us great if not send us a text or shoot us an email um, all of our contact information is below um, anything else that people need to know if well, they've never been here before no, I mean, I, I think I think we touched on a lot of good stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if, you, if you like these videos, uh, we do appreciate you watching. Um, it would be awesome if you could hit the subscribe button. Uh, make if sure to- If it helps, give us a thumbs up too. Yeah, like, like the video and uh, tap the little bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. We post a, a new video at least once a week. Um, so try to be as helpful as we can. And uh, if you're thinking about moving out this way, we look forward to speaking with you. All right, take care everyone. Talk to you later.